Hello guys, when you are riding an uh, e-bike with a powerful mid-drive, often you will observe that you are not using or utilizing uh, the whole spectrum of the cassette. Most of the time you will be riding on the largest uh, cogs and you will observe that you are when you are shifting to the highest gear with the smallest cogs, the chain is starting to s jump off. So that's the point where you can actually consider uh, changing your drive turn to single speed. So there are many solutions on the market that you can install on the standard Shimano hub. Here you can see also the effects when you are using the standard uh, cassette on the hub with uh, high torque motors. You can see these bytes on the edges of the slots. So that's the consequence of using the standard type of cassette with the powerful motors. You will see the these cassettes are built with discs connected together with these pins. And there is always minor movement between the discs causing these bytes on the hub. So what you can do to change the drive turn to the single speed? There are solutions on AliExpress uh, sold by Zito or Muzi. Here you can see the example for 23 teeth uh, drive. And as you can see it's built in the way that you have this long slots engaging on the hub and this prevents these bytes on the hub. So this is 23, here you can see the version of 21. So as you can see, these uh, sprockets have uh, holes, six of them, to match up with this uh, mounting plate, I can call it. But also you will observe that when using uh, this uh, small amount of teeth, you might miss some torque on the uh, bike. So what is the solution to combat this? You can try out of modifying the existing cassette, like this one, or another one here, made of stainless steel. So I decided to go with the stainless steel, it looks better and it's more sturdy. And that's what you get when you are this when you disassemble all these cocks. Yeah. So I decided to go with the largest uh, larger cocks. Yeah. This one is 32 teeth, and here you can see 28. And this is already modified by me. And I drilled holes to install the adapter for mounting on the hub. This is the most difficult job since this is stainless steel, so it's quite difficult to uh, drill the holes. Yeah. But if you make it right, you can perfectly align the holes. As you can see over here. Yeah. So, and you can see the difference in the size of this sprocket. So this sprocket will give me a plenty of torque. 28 teeth and if you have like you know a high voltage motor you can still maintain quite fairly fairly high uh, top speed so now i will just mount these uh, attachment plates and i'll show you how it looks like on the wheel Here you can see the adapters installed on the sprocket. The thickness of it is approximately 12 mm as I remember. So now it's the time to install it on the hub. You can see some spaces over here. And I put uh, on the hub around uh, 40 mm spacers already. Hard to say uh, how many of them you need, it all depends on the, the chain line you want to achieve or the 
time being I will put it on the in the center. That's how you do this. So you just need to install the remaining spacers. Just like that. And then you need to secure it with this cap. Uh, then you need a branch to tighten it to approximately 30 or 14 newton meters. And that's how the whole assembly looks like. Yeah. So here you can see the single speed drivetrain. Fairly big uh, sprocket, 28 teeth. I need to put it on the back to see if I have enough torque I want. If it will not be sufficient, I have always an option to go with this larger sprocket, 32 version. But since I was uh, testing this 23, it was almost okay. I think 28 will be just perfect for me. All right, so I put it on the back and then I'll <laughs> see how it goes. Okay, back wheel is installed as you can see. So this is the whole setup for the single speed drivetrain. As you can see I'm using this uh, chain tensioner. This is obligatory. Otherwise chain will be just falling off all the time. When the suspension is moving up and down. see some details. This uh, chain tensioner allows to set properly the position of the jockey wheel. Yeah, so it must be in line with the sprocket. Just to guide the chain properly into position. Yeah. Crucial factor here is also the chain length. Cannot be too short, otherwise the jockey will be hitting the sprocket. It can be too long as well, because then the chain tensioner will not maintain tension on the chain. Okay guys, I took this back for testing to see how it goes with this new sprocket. The acceleration is way better than I expected. Uh, I can uh, go to top speed maybe in 4 or 5 seconds. Uh, max speed is around 50 km per hour, but that's enough for me. This bike was built for a hard terrain riding in the mountains and the forest, so the torque is the most important thing here. So if you're considering installing this type of sprocket on your uh, bike, I think it's a good idea, especially if you're riding on the throttle. Uh, if you are using pad pass, then it's better just to stay with normal cassette and gearing system. Okay, so that's all for today. Thanks for watching this movie. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye.